Henry O. C. N. Flipper, the first African American to graduate from West Point, was dishonorably discharged from the Army in 1882 after being wrongly accused by his commanding officer. This false accusation led to a 95 year conflict between Flipper and the United States military. Despite the racism and the systematic prejudice within the military, Henry Flipper continued to serve his country with valor. Flipper's story is an important one because in order for our country to move forward, we must first correct our mistakes from the past. African Americans have a long history of mistreatment while serving in the U.S. military. Enslaved African Americans were often promised their freedom for fighting only to be returned to their masters. They were paid much less than a white soldier and held the lowest ranking positions, such as cooks and stewards. In one case at Fort Pillow, 300 African American Union soldiers were massacred after being captured by the South while their white comrades were spared. In the Civil War, the mortality rate of blacks was almost 40% higher than whites due to poor equipment, conditions, and non-existent medical facilities. Henry Ossian Flipper was a slave until the age of eight when his father bought his and his mother's freedom. Henry first learned to read and write from another slave in the back of a barn and was described by a teacher at Atlanta University as a sturdy, well-built lad, a mulatto, who was bright, intelligent, and studious. In 1873, Flipper was appointed to the United States Military Academy by Representative James C. Freeman. He was hoping to win over the support of new black voters. Life in the academy was very difficult for an African-American cadet surrounded by so many white classmates. I was harassed, ignored, isolated, insulted, and threatened by my classmates. There was no society for me to enjoy, no friends, male or female, for me to visit. So absolute was my isolation. Post-Civil War, the military was restructured. All the black soldiers were separated into four segregated units known as the Buffalo Soldiers and were sent out west. Following Flipper's graduation, he was sent to join the 10th Cavalry Unit in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. It was here that he would serve as a second lieutenant, the only African American to hold such a rank. By the spring of 1880, Flipper had earned respect from both his peers and his commanders, including Colonel Benjamin H. Grierson and Captain Nicholas Nolan. At this time, he was serving in a variety of roles, including the acting commissary, a role for which he had never been trained to do. His career in the military looked promising until March of 1881, when Colonel William R. Shafter and First Lieutenant Lewis Wilhelmy took charge of the post. Shafter told Flipper that he would be replaced as commissary and ordered him to hold the commissary money in his private quarters rather than the quartermaster safe. Flipper was assumed guilty of misappropriation of funds and was moved to a windowless six and a half by four and a half foot cell and was forbidden to have visitors. During the search, Shafter removed all of Flipper's valuables, including his West Point ring. Such harsh treatment of an officer had never been done before at this time. Later, Shafter would be told by his general that this treatment was not usual, unless there was a reason to believe the prisoner would escape. After this, Flipper was moved to a different quarters. Once news got out about the charges against Flipper, many of his peers wanted to help, even raising funds to cover the missing money. But despite this, the charges remained. Flipper was officially arraigned on charges of embezzlement and conduct unbecoming of an officer and a gentleman. Flipper attempted to contact leading African Americans out east to raise money for lawyer fees. But despite his efforts, no one was willing to take the case. Just as he was ready to give up, Flipper received a letter from Captain Merritt Barber of the 16th Infantry stating that he would help. During the trial, the military failed to produce any evidence that Flipper stole the money. Shafter and Wilhelmy openly admitted that they did not know where the money had gone. Captain Barber presented evidence that Shafter had signed off on each week's commissary reports. 
In Flipper's testimony, he stated that when he went to go make the final deposit and discovered over $2,000 were missing, he did not report it right away because he knew Shafter, by reputation and observation, would be a severe, stern man, and hence decided to find a solution to the problem on his own. In Captain Barber's concluding statement, he argued that the military had failed to prove that his client, Henry Flipper, had intentionally, willfully, and wrongfully converted the public money to which he was trusted to his own personal use and benefit. In regards to the charge that Flipper had misled his commanding officer, Barber stated, From the time he was a mere boy, he had to fight the battle of life alone. He has had no one to turn to for counsel or sympathy. Is it strange that when he found himself confronted with a mystery he could not solve, he should hide in his own breast and endeavor to work out the problem alone, as he had been compelled to do with all the other problems of his life? Although Henry Flipper was cleared of embellishment, he was found guilty of the charge of conduct unbecoming of an officer and gentleman, and was sentenced to be dishonorably discharged. The case and severity of the charges were reviewed by Higher Officer D.G. Swaim and Secretary of War Robert Lincoln. Swaim stated, There is no case on record in which an officer was treated with such personal harshness and indignity upon the case grounds set forth as Lieutenant Flipper by Colonel Shafter and the officers who searched his personal headquarters, taking his watch and ordinance from him, especially as they must have known that there are no real grounds for such actions. These opinions were ignored, and on June 30, 1882, the officer corps of the United States military regained its racial purity. After he was dismissed, Flipper was eager to clear his name, even sending numerous letters to the Military Affairs Committee. Meanwhile, he went on to hold 11 more jobs, all which served his government and country, including opening up a civil and mining engineering business, serving as a special agent for the Court of Private Land Claims, and even being named a special agent for the Department of Justice by U.S. Attorney Matthew Reynolds. Reynolds admired Flipper's fidelity, integrity, and magnificent ability, and did not believe the court-martial charges to be true. Flipper returned to Georgia in 1931 and continued unsuccessfully to petition the Army to remove his dishonorable discharge until his death in April of 1940. His brother, Bishop Joseph Flipper, placed a headstone on his grave that read, Lieutenant Henry O. Flipper, retired U.S. Army officer. After Flipper died, his family continued the fight, and in 1976, the conflict between the U.S. military and Henry Flipper was resolved when it was confirmed that the white officers had framed him. The military formally changed his discharge to honorable, and Henry O. Flipper was reburied with full military honors in Thomasville, Georgia. 23 years later, in 1999, President Bill Clinton formally pardoned Flipper, stating, Today is a day when we correct the error and resolve to do even better in the future. I thank all of Henry Flipper's descendants for believing and proving that challenges never disappear, but in the long run, freedom comes to those who persevere. Every four years, the U.S. Military Academy honors Henry Flipper and recognizes an outstanding West Point cadet in his name. In 2013, Speaker Colonel Irving Smith stated, I want you to feel uncomfortable for a moment. I want you to understand what Henry O. Flipper must have felt every single day. Why do we keep dwelling on our past? After all, we have come so far. This was a quote Flipper would say to himself every day, and it was exactly what he did. He moved on from the past and continued to serve his country with valor. Henry Ossian Flipper is important to us today because his story shows how our country and government can correct their mistakes and learn from them in the future. Flipper was also the first black graduate from West Point, which showed many African Americans how to persevere through racism. Despite people like Flipper, African Americans today are still not treated as well as whites. A survey sent out by National Public Radio asked African-Americans 
whether they believe discrimination still exists in the U.S. today. And 92% of those who responded stated that their race was not getting treated as well as white people.